what's up everyone? Welcome to my review of Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformers. The world of kart racing games on consoles is not as booming and popular anymore as it used to be. It all started back on the Super Nintendo when Nintendo released Super Mario Kart. It was a hugely successful game and it brought to life a new genre of racing games. However, it was during the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 era that kart racers became very popular and sprung from the ground like weeds. All of a sudden, it was a well-liked genre and a lot of developers wanted to show their own take on the concept. Nintendo again was the first in line when they released Mario Kart 64 back in December of 1996 and it set a new standard for kart racing games. It would take almost a full year before the next big kart racing game was released, also on Nintendo 64. It was called Diddy Kong Racing. Meanwhile, in PlayStation camp, it was still quiet. Eventually, it would take another year before Naughty Dog, who else, released Crash Team Racing in 1999. There have been numerous other kart racing games, but I mainly focused on the most popular ones. For a long time, Crash Team Racing had been my all-time favorite kart racing game even though other games in the genre came out afterwards, including the new Mario Kart games. Then, back in 2010, Sega released Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. To me, personally, it could not top Crash Team Racing, but it showed potential for an eventual sequel. Of course, the question would always be back then if Sega would release another game in the genre or not, but then, two and a half years later, in 2012, Sega did, and they released Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform. Now, since the first time I heard the names of those two games, I started wondering who at Sega was responsible for coming up with names for game titles. Were they trying to compete with the longest game title in the world? It's not like they couldn't think of other, shorter names, because these were not the first kart racers Sega published. Way back in 1994, they released their first kart racer called Sonic Drift. The sequel to that was simply called Sonic Drift 2, so yeah, those names weren't anything special, but they did suit their purposes, and it didn't make you use your full lung capacity while pronouncing them. Anyway, so far for the history lesson. On to gameplay. This is what it's all about, and this is where Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed really shines. What makes this game unique compared to the likes of Mario Kart is that your vehicle can transform during races from a car to either a boat or a plane, and vice versa. I know in Mario Kart 8 there are gliding parts and underwater parts, but in All-Stars Racing Transformed, you actually fly and not glide and you actually race on water instead of going underwater in your kart. This is always triggered by a change in the track you are racing on. Sometimes the track is static and just has water or flying parts, but some tracks change dynamically during a race, usually at the start of a new lap. This makes for a very nice variety in gameplay since every form of your vehicle handles differently. Unlike Mario Kart 8, you cannot customize your own vehicle in this game. Every character has its own standard vehicle and the only way to customize how it handles is by using so-called mods. You unlock these mods by leveling up your character or earning enough stars in the World Tour mode to unlock special console mods there. In total, there are 25 characters to unlock and race with. These characters are all characters from previous Sega games, aside from two cameo appearances, namely Racket Ralph and, in case of the Wii U and Xbox 360 version, your avatar. The game has a total of 40 tracks to race on. Now, granted, half of those are mirror tracks, but instead of racing the tracks backwards, these tracks are literally mirrored. So if the normal track has a corner to the right, the mirror track has that same corner but then to the left. This means that even if you mastered the original tracks, it is quite challenging to mirror all those corners in your mind. Just like the characters, all the tracks are also based on previous Sega games and the developer did a great job at capturing the atmosphere of those games. The tracks often have more than one path to take and most of them also include shortcuts that you can find giving you the freedom to race the track your own way. Beware though, the shortcuts are mostly pretty challenging, making it a risk going through them without crashing into an obstacle or falling off the track. 
Just like most kart racers, this game also has power-ups. To sum them all up, there is the firework, which shoots a rocket in a straight line, the drone, which automatically targets the person in front of you, the blowfish, which can either be used as a mine or as a projectile, a boost that, well, gives you a boost, a twister that hits an opponent and then spins them around for a short period, inverting all controls, ice that lets you shoot three balls of ice damaging and sometimes freezing opponents, a swarm of bees that flies to the front of the field then scatters all over the track damaging anyone hitting them, hot rod which gives you a three stage boost then explodes when you deactivate it, the glove which catches incoming projectiles preventing damage and then lets you use that weapon that it caught, and finally the all star which not only makes you invincible for a short period of time but also makes you move faster and lets your character shoot objects at other racers. There are also super pickups to be found that give you either 3 fireworks, 6 ice shots, 3 blowfish, 3 boosts, or a super glove. The balance between these power ups is great and I have not had any situation where one of the other racers had a clear advantage. I will focus this review mainly on the world tour mode since this is practically 80% of the whole game. There are also other game modes like time trials, grand prix, single races and multiplayer modes which are basically self-explanatory. In the world tour mode it is your goal to progress through the different war portals and eventually complete every race it has to offer, earning stars along the way that can be used to unlock new levels, characters and mods. However, these are not just standard kart races. The game has a big variety of different sort of races which I will elaborate on now. Standard Race The standard race is the classic kart racing race in which your goal is to finish on the podium or first on higher difficulty levels using whatever means necessary. These really don't need more explanation. Battle Race Battle races are races in which your goal is to be the last man standing. Each racer gets 3 hit points. If you get hit by a projectile or fall off the track, you will lose 1 hit point. If you lose all hit points, it's game over. These are really fun and quite challenging on higher difficulty levels. Boost Race In these races, all power-ups are removed and there are extra boost bats added to the tracks. The goal is to finish first, so it is important to find the perfect line on the track to gain and maintain the highest possible speed. Sprint Race this is a time attack race in which you have to beat a target time in order to win. A nice feature is that you also see the ghost of the target time. This sometimes lets you see a better driving line or shortcut that you might not have known about before. Versus Race These are one on one races. You start the race against one opponent and need to beat him or her in order to progress to the next round, with each round getting a bit more difficult than the last one. A race usually consists of 3 to 5 opponents, and you finish the race if you beat them all. Ring Race A ring race is done solely in the airplane form of your vehicle. The concept is simple, fly through a set amount of rings and checkpoints before the timer runs out in order to finish the race. The rings are sometimes placed in tricky places though, which can make these races quite challenging. Traffic Attack in Traffic Attack, your goal is to avoid traffic on the road and reach a certain amount of checkpoints in order to finish the race. The traffic consists of green cars, which usually drive a static line on the track, orange cars that drive from left to right across the track, and blue police cars that try to block your way. Especially the police cars can be tricky to get past without crashing into them. Each checkpoint gives you some extra time. You can also get bonus time by driving between two cars that have a timeline between them. If the timer runs out before you reach the final checkpoint, it's game over. Boost Challenge Boost challenges are races in which a timer goes down. The only way to stop it from going down is to boost. You can do this by using boost paths on the track or by drifting or performing tricks that gives you boosts. The goal is to reach a certain amount of checkpoints before the timer hits zero. Drift Challenge In these races, you need to perform drifts on the highlighted areas on the track in order to get additional time. 
Trying to stay within the specified drift zone can be quite tricky sometimes. If the timer runs out before you reach the final checkpoint, the race is over and you failed. And finally, the pursuit race. I hate these races most of all. The goal is to pursue and destroy a tank that is always in front of you on the track. The tank starts by dropping static bombs on the track that you need to avoid in order to not get damaged. You have a health bar that, if depleted, ends the race. If you damage the tank enough by firing the missiles that you find on the track, it will then start shooting fireballs backwards. These are harder to avoid since they fly towards you. Eventually, when you damage the tank even more, it will drop fences on the track. Often, the fences cover the whole track, making it nearly impossible to avoid them. The only thing you can try is shooting rockets at them, but due to the broken hit detection in this game mode, the rockets don't always hit. The race is over if you manage to destroy the tank. As you can see, the game offers a wide variety of things to do and it will take you quite some time before you have unlocked everything. And even then, you still need to master all the tracks and different game modes. This is also what makes me feel like this game is better than the likes of Mario Kart 8 in which you really only do normal races or time trials. It also has great controls that are easy to master and get used to. So far there has not been any kart racing game that I know of that offers the same variety of things to do as All Stars Racing Transformed. Graphics The graphics of All Stars Racing Transformed are a bit of hit or miss. I have tested this game on multiple platforms, but this review is based on the Xbox 360 version, which I played on Xbox One. If anything, they did an amazing job in creating nice looking and colorful tracks. I really love that in games. But there is one thing dragging the visual experience down a bit, and that is the low resolution the game runs at. On both Xbox 360 and Wii U, the game runs at a sub-HD resolution, which clearly shows. The only versions running in higher resolutions are the PlayStation 3 and PC versions. I just wish that the developer chose to use less special effects and instead put all that graphical power into the resolution so the game looks a bit more sharp. Now the game looks a bit soft due to the low resolution, which is a shame because it takes away some of its beauty. Luckily, the game makes use of quite a lot of motion blur. This gives it a great feeling of speed and does actually cover up some of the artifacts caused by this low resolution. However, the low resolution did make it so that I had no option at all to capture footage in high resolution. The footage that I captured is actually full HD, but it is upscaled, so the base game still runs at a sub HD resolution, which explains the blurry images, so my apologies for that. All in all, it is a game that was made for the previous generation of consoles. Given that fact, it still holds up fairly well today. The graphics are certainly not a reason to leave this game on the side if you've never played it before. And if graphics are really that important to you, you can always play the PC version, which you can customize to your liking then. Audio The audio is also a part where All Stars Racing Transformed really shines. The game features its own great soundtrack that you can hear during the introduction movie and in the menus, but it also features a lot of great songs from previous Sega games. There really is not one single track in this game that I don't like, with my favorite track being the Afterburner track. The music is fast paced and catchy, which perfectly matches the high speed gameplay and battles. Also, the sound effects are great. Vehicles sound powerful and nice, power ups have fitting sounds, and even environmental sounds are present. One thing I dislike about the audio is the announcer. He will pronounce almost any option or game mode you select, which can get quite irritating in the long run. To make matters worse, he will also repeat that option or game mode if you wait too long. There is absolutely no way to shut him up. Even turning his voice down to zero in the menu does nothing at all, which seems to be a bug in the game. The comments he makes when turning his volume down though are quite funny. This is my only job! 
So it's time for the conclusion of this review. As stated before, I am still looking for a kart racing game that offers the same amount of variety as Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform does. Mario Kart 8 is a good game by any means, but it doesn't come close when it comes to variety. This game is just an absolute blast to play through and even now, 6 years after release, I am still playing it a lot. It has its little flaws and the game is not perfect, but I would be hard pressed if I gave it anything below a 9 out of 10. To me personally, it is still the best kart racing game out there, period. And I can only hope that the next entry in this series will be just as great. If you like kart racers and haven't tried this game out yet, be sure to do so. You will not regret it and it will give you hours upon hours of fun and entertainment. Thank you so much for staying with me through this review, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any tips, advice or just want to share your opinion, please do so in the comment section below. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I will make more reviews and other videos in the future, so be sure to subscribe to this channel. I hope you all have a nice day.